God bless you guys. Hey guys, how are you? We're back. Yes. Hey Amen. Man. Number three, right? Number three of the podcast, mm-hmm. but we've already put up a couple sermons, and uh, we're just praying that you guys are enjoying them, that you're even more than enjoying them, being edified by them, being built up. Yes, absolutely. You know, and um, we want to thank you. Uh, as you can see, um, we added a map um, because I, I I need to visualize. I'm a visual type of person. I know, me too. Yeah, and I want to be able to visualize kind of where um, your letters are coming from, you know, and uh, so... Uh, what we want to do is just start adding pins, you know, and um, I didn't get a chance. We just barely put the pins in, but the next podcast, we're going to list, name the cities. Yeah. Or the, the places, actually, not the cities, the, the prisons. Um, and that way, as we... as we it, Texas is popping. Yeah, man. Look at that. Texas uh, has a lot of pins in it. Let me show them the close-up, a little bit of a close-up, yeah. a little better there. But you can see all those pins. <laughs> All those pins in Texas. Yeah. There's one lonely one right here. In California. In California. So mm-hmm. um, I think it'll be fun. And um, we are going to be... Let me turn my ringer off, guys. I apologize. Um, I pulled you should my fo- know better. I pulled my phone out earlier to do it. And I ended up screenshotting this instead and forgot to turn the ringer off. But um, I passed her. What we're excited about is we're gonna uh, we're expanding beyond uh, the Pando app into the Indovo. So make sure you let us know which which um which app you're watching us in because we want to have a different color for pando app and yeah. a different color from uh edovo i said edovo edovo yeah. so that way we can kind of build a visualization of where we reach and and also um we want a lot of people at the church are going to be just laying their hands over this map and praying absolutely you know so uh that's uh, um something important guys so I, i'm excited about that you know you know just talking about that as well um just know that we are uh, as we're getting these these letters and uh, as the prayer requests are coming in, those prayer requests um, that are coming in with those letters are being um, seen and taken into our intercession prayer nights and they are being prayed with our intercession uh, teams. And, you know, guys, I, I just want you to know that um, they are being prayed for and... Um, as as you're requesting for prayer for uh, a lot of court dates for things that are taking place in your life and specific prayers that you're being that you're actually requesting they are being looked at they are being Amen. prayed for so please um we are interceding for your prayers and just know that that they are being read okay you know um the first um video we did podcast is uh, more of an introduction, a little bit about who we were, because we wanted you guys to know who we are, and 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 you're like, who are these people that popped up in on our tablet? And and I I, I think we did a fairly good job of it. And um, with, it's hard. How do you introduce? You know, there's so much behind the testimony. There's so much behind even House of Rest and how we got uh, started. Who but we are, yeah. Yeah, but I I think we did a fairly um, good assessment and job of it. And then the last one, we got to put in a teaching, you know, but I've been really, guys, I I want you to understand something that, uh, as you guys know, I got saved in in, in federal prison and um, ended up serving six years. And during that time, I, I, I try to always be very intentional with my time, you know, and I wanted it to use my time for what God was calling me to do, you know, and I still, I, I kept that. That's a principle that I kept even after I released and starting the church and Mm -hmm. everything I did, I I said I wanted to to be intentional because a lot of times, guys, as you guys know, um, when you you see a, um, uh, like a hamster in a wheel, oh, he looks like he's just running somewhere, but the whole time he's just running circles. Like it's just turning the wheel. And unfortunately in ministry, guys, sometimes when we're not intentional, we're just making all kinds of movement, but not really doing anything. Making all kinds of noise. How do I word it? <laughs> no, it's the same thing. You're making all kinds of noise, and yeah. you just, you know, because yeah. that's what you're doing when you're going in circles. You're making, um, yeah. you're just making circles and making all kinds of noise because eventually that wheel's gonna actually, you know, make some noise and become rusty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and and I have seen, I have seen this firsthand. I've seen people that have really gotten tired and weary of ministry but then when you ask them what what has happened what is God doing what is God expanding what yeah and they don't have an answer they're just like well I'm just busy for God but I don't really have a direction mm. you know 
<laughs> and and so oh that's good that's heavy yeah we've oh you yeah. guys we always want to be very intentional you know think of it this way like for instance if you get a magnifying glass and and you want to light a fire on something you know it's it's concentrated light that lights the fire so we want to be concentrated in our ministry to light the fire of the holy ghost regardless of whether we're preaching to the the sanctuary here in the congregation whether when we go out on on in downtown modesto to evangelize on the streets whether it's me writing a book or or you when you worship somewhere or once in a while you you accept an invitation to speak somewhere we want to be intentional we're like what are we doing this for so what's the purpose yeah what's the purpose guys and and um so my thing was this i'm just like lord you open this door to reach the incarcerated so fast it literally left our head spinning you know so now that we got the introduction out of the way now we have a couple uh, sermons uh, services there so you guys can so you guys are getting a feel for what we're about and my thing is this my whole time this this last few days is okay god okay excitement okay cool doors open let us be intentional what exactly are we doing and this is what we've been talking about yeah yeah. Um, you know, both of us. This is what we've been talking to the Lord about and really thinking about this, guys, because we don't want to take this opportunity for granted. We don't want to um, just do any old thing. We don't want to reinvent wheels or. Yeah, like yeah. we don't. I don't, you know, I don't want to entertain anyone. I want to edify. Absolutely. I want to build up because I truly, truly believe that. Well, I'm speaking for both of us. We believe that Jesus is coming soon. Second, we believe that God is causing a revival to happen in prisons. God is raising up leaders. And that's who we want to reach. We want to reach those that God has a special calling on, that God is doing. Whether or not you have a release date or not, regardless of the fact, we want to be intentional and not entertain. Yeah, and everybody is doing, everybody is called to do something different and everybody is called with a special gift, you know, and and we're seeing that. Mm -hmm. So we want to be intentional for that reason, and we want to say, okay, Lord, what have you called us to do specifically? Yeah, you know, through and this through this app, through right? this app, exactly. So I think this is where we're at. We're okay, like Lord, what can we do? What can yeah. we? What what do you want us to do? specifically and i think that that's that's where that's where we that's what we have actually been talking about yeah, and saying exactly what gift um do you want to pull out of us lord what is it exactly that you want us to do and um so i think that's what we want to talk about is about yeah. being intentional yeah just being intentional and and kind of get um, get them to know a little bit more about yeah. us I, I do know that i i mentioned going to bible college when i was incarcerated so before i forget uh, the Bible college I went to is CLU, um, Christian Leadership University, and they do um, work with inmates. Um, you got to mm -hmm. buy their buy their um, textbooks and stuff. But you know, I don't want to speak for them, but I know they waive stuff for uh, those that are incarcerated, and it's an amazing Bible college. Uh, it's CLUonline.com. In case I forget, and and they they love the fact that I'm shouting them out because they love to reach as many people as possible. As, maybe you can put that information at the end. Is that mm. possibility well, for I mean, you to if do if that? They could just write it down as I say. Yeah, it. yeah, guys, yeah. make sure that you you write that information down because that is something that you definitely want to look into. Um, that is really really good information. Look into it. Um, reach out to them, and yeah. they love 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 to bless and help out uh you know the incarcerated this is yeah. a great opportunity guys yeah the, um they're they got my associate's degree in biblical studies and then my bachelor's in ministry through them and i still have a, a great relationship with them you know but another thing too guys is that man we appreciate the letters but i, I you mentioned a little bit but i kind of want to talk a little bit about that is that i realized that in this hour when we do these podcasts i want to be able to put as much edifying and building up as possible so you know we are going to put a pin when somebody mentions it if you have a prayer request we have a whole team that is going to be interceding for your prayer so it's not going to be ignored but what happens is i i i don't think the um we it would be uh rightful right, uh, like stewards of our time 
if, for instance, we start reading a lot of letters and it turns into something else because we want to edify and build up, you know, so we are going to pin you uh, wherever you're from. We are going to intercede for you and give it to a whole team that's going to be doing that. But we want to use this time to really uh, speak to those future leaders, to those future pastors and evangelists, to those prophets, to those apostles, you know, to those that uh, are hungry for something more. Absolutely. And I say that with complete respect and love, you know, because again, I want to be a good steward of the time God has given us. You know, we should always be good stewards of the things God gives us. Absolutely. You know, and um, so I think that, oh, I want to share something else too, is I didn't even mention to you guys that when I got out, remember in, in uh, what, three years after I got out? Uh, yeah, 2014. Well, you started writing it a little bit before, but that's three years is when you... Yeah, yeah. so in 2014, um, I, I used to do, before in the world, I did some film and movies that went to straight to uh, like Bloodbuster video, Hollywood video, and, um, and that was in the past. But when I got out, three years uh, after, four years after I got out, I actually um, wrote directed and filmed a faith-based Christian film with um, our good friend, uh, Scott Youngkite. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called Always With You Guys. So we decided that um, not today, but tomorrow, we are going to upload our film that we did called Always With You. So uh, I pray that, I mean, it's a little dated, it's 10 years ago, <laughs> it's a little dated, you know, but I, I hope and I pray that, that you um, enjoy it, that you um, share it with as many people because we want to touch lives for Jesus. Absolutely. You know, but um, I do have the, the moving trailer, oh. you know, just to give you a little glimpse. And I'm yes. sorry, you got to wait a day, you know, but uh, we will upload it. Um, it'll be on uh, Thursday. Okay. But you're going to show the trailer I'm now. I'm going to show the trailer right oh, now. Oh, cool. You okay. ready? Yeah. You let's ready? Let's do it. You guys ready? All right. All right. Here it is. I gotta go. I'll call you tomorrow. You'll call me tomorrow? Yes, okay.
That's pretty cool to see that. Yeah, yeah. guys. Um, it's been a while. You know, when you have a little bit to work with, guys, uh, we had a, a, a pretty good camera, some decent sound. Um, <laughs> obviously, I look back now and I'm just like, man, we'd, we'd make a way better movie now. But I'm really proud of this project, guys. And um, it's, it's something I'm very proud of. Matter of fact, we're, uh, we're trying to get it on some uh, movie platforms out here. So in, in a sense, not that many people have seen it. Give me a pound, babe. Come on. <laughs> so That's actu- pretty cool. So actually, they, um, <laughs> a lot of them are going to get to see it before the world does because we, I want to get it on Amazon Prime. I want to get it on some of the other platforms. Wow. Oh, that's pretty awesome. So um, I've only seen it, guys. I've only seen that, I think, one time. And he can never get me to sit down and really, truly watch a movie. I used to watch... I'm the type of person that will watch movies and get up all the time and never sit down and fully watch a movie. So that was me. Um, and now, if I even try to pick up my phone, like literally pick up my phone, he'll be like, are you done now? <laughs> That's him, okay? And... Um, yeah, I have to literally put everything away. Um, I have to be sitting down. I can't even get up to do anything because he'll be like, are you done? Sit down and watch the movie. So that is the way I have to watch a movie now. So I don't think I really truly paid attention to it. But I think I'm going to have to watch it with you guys when you guys watch it. Um, so a little, but I'm proud of you. Well, a little a bit of a backdrop to it is one of the actors, uh, Jose Rosette, he's actually... The movies I used to do in the past were kind of like these gangster movies and stuff. So he was out of um, Arizona. He was in quite a bit of movies. He was in Three Kings. He played one of the Iraqis in the background. <laughs> mm-hmm. He played in uh, Any Given Sunday. He was the bodyguard of uh, Cameron Diaz. Yeah, and then movie. he did that new one that um, uh, Monsters of Man. Monsters of Man. Like, yeah. That was actually pretty good. He did a, a lot of films. So. We stayed friends, um, and so uh, when I got a prison, when, when I got out of prison, I got a hold of him. Matter of fact, he was filming in San Francisco, uh, maybe two months after I got out, and I went and met with him, had lunch with him, and he uh, agreed to come down and, and do the movie. He's the one that plays the father. Yeah. Um, and the young girl, that's that's our daughter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> really proud of her. Um, <clears throat> she's ten years older now. Yeah, and I think you're gonna at the end of this, you're gonna share the. Um, the, the music, but yeah. you wrote that right on yeah. right on the spot, right? So sort of, sort of, a few days yeah. the night before. So there's a music video that came along with the movie soundtrack, and in a little well, toward the end of this podcast, I'm going to show you the music video. I know sometimes you guys like to hear new music. It is a song that I wrote the lyrics, but my daughter sang it, you know, and she's the one that starred in the movie. And uh, but it was something I'm very proud of, guys. Yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy the movie. And, hey, um, you know what? I hope it encourages. I hope it encourages you guys that man. Just if there's something in your heart, you know, you want to write something, you want to do something, just do it. Yeah. You know, th- there's always with God, nothing is impossible. You know, it's a, it actually for those of you that are evangelists, it's a great tool because. You know, somebody that's not saved will probably don't won't want to watch this podcast. For sure, won't want to see our Sunday sermons. But man, who 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 doesn't want to see a good movie? Yeah. And it's a good way to to evangelize and share the gospel because well, once you see it, you'll see the gospel's all over it, guys. And it's a great tool for evangelists. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so true. You yeah. know, I I really truly believe that a lot of the times people will say like, you know, well what do what do i have you know to to share how do i evangelize how do mm-hmm. i do anything your testimony man like you got a testimony and your testimony is everything your life your life speaks for itself and mm-hmm. your testimony is the story that many need to listen to many need to hear yeah. and there is somebody who needs to hear your story there's somebody whose life can be changed through your story so amen. so share it don't ever hold anything back amen amen yeah no matter how no matter how bad the camera is or yeah. anything <laughs> yeah so guys you know um, speaking of being intentional i think the best way is um is share there's four there's four bullet points four bullet points to our vision statement that at house of rest and and i think it should extend out to you guys just to let you it lets you know where we're at yeah you know and i just wanted to share that with you guys we share this with the congregation we share it with the youtube channel um you know (laughs) this is crazy this is a fun little thing guys is that we've had the youtube channel for 13 years 
and we're at 11,400 subscribers. It took me 13 years. Yeah. 11,400 subscribers, 13 years. Do you guys realize we are like at 10,000? No, 11? Wait, we're more. No, they, no, no. We they, haven't surpassed the YouTube yet. About to surpass we're, it. <laughs> you guys are about to surpass in two weeks what it took 13 years to build on YouTube, man. So <laughs> thank Woo! you, guys. Thank you, guys. That That's, you know... It's so good, man, to be able to to do things for Jesus. It really you is. You know, but I wanted to share with you our our vision statement, just so you know, is the first one, the number one. I'll read the first one. You read the second one. All right, go for it. The first one is we love Jesus with no agenda. Let me explain that because I don't know what it's like, maybe for some of you or where it's at. I don't know, but out here, unfortunately, out here in the free world, um, there's so much agenda going on. You know, people use Jesus for riches. People use Jesus for fame. People use Jesus for all kinds of stuff. And here at House of Rest, we love Jesus with no agenda. We love him just because of who he is, because of what he did. And if all he did was die on a cross for us, that's all we need because that's it's sufficient. salvation. It's sufficient. You know, so number one bullet point of our vision statement is we love Jesus with no agenda. That's right. He's the senior pastor here. Yeah, that's another thing I always say <laughs> is that he is a senior pastor of the church and the pulpit will always belong to him. Yeah, absolutely. Second bullet point, we teach identity in Christ. Yeah, we teach identity in Christ. You surrender to him. He dwells within us. You know, we have the authority and we have the power to do all things in his name. You know, if, if he lives in us, then we have the capability to do all things in his name. So we teach identity in Christ. If you come to this church, that this is what you're going to learn. Yeah. You're going to learn identity. You're going to learn identity, guys. Uh, I, I wrote a book. One of my books is called Who Are You? Mm -hmm. uh, identity in Christ. Even our children. Our children learn it. We teach it at a seminar. We teach it at our Bible, PLBS Bible School. This is our Bible school here, but we teach a curriculum from CLU. Yeah. But we built an identity course. And you're going to be learning that too, guys. And it is powerful. Absolutely. Um, you know, you served God for 22 years when I met you. When I I had been serving 22 years um, with all my heart, guys, all my heart. I came in when I was 16 years old, two little, two babies. Um, and I learned. I, I did learn, but I only learned what, what somebody, you know, was taught. You can only learn what somebody is taught themselves, mm -hmm. you know. And, and you got to remember that when somebody is teaching from the pulpit, you're going to learn what they were taught as well. And yeah. for 22 years, I served full heartedly, um, didn't know how to say no to, to ministry. Um, I love to serve. I did it for 22 years with all my heart, love Jesus, but there was something missing. There was something empty. I needed more. Um, and I felt that I would constantly trip and fall. And I'd come back to the world sometimes and, and then I'd get back up and I, and I didn't understand why it was so easy for me to constantly fall back to the world. It almost felt like I was just constantly, mm -hmm. you know, falling back. There was no foundation. Have you ever, have you ever built like, you know, when, when we were in, in elementary school and you would build those those houses out of those sticks. Oh, the, like the, lo like the Lolly, popsicle the, sticks? The popsicle sticks. Yeah. And when you would build those popsicle still ho those, the houses, and but you built them on no foundation, they would fall right away mm. and collapse. Yeah. Well, that's how I felt. Or like, a house of cards. With yes, the, Remember exactly. the poker cards? Well, those never worked for me. But no. when I would build my house popsicle stick houses I would build it and it would constantly collapse on me and I never understood why it's because I never had a foundation and one year after 22 years um, I did come to meet David and I remember that for a very very long time he was edifying and teaching me um, the word and he began to teach me about identity 
and he would say, I need you to go to this scripture. I need you to go to this scripture. And this was over the phone. You know, we courted for a while over the phone and he just, you know. Well, we lived four and a half hours apart. Yeah, we, we lived, you know, uh, I, I was in Southern California and he was in Northern California and he'd just edify and he'd just tell me, go to the scripture and he'd just start pouring into me. And I would start reading and there was one scripture in Romans, Romans 6, 8, and um, where it just talked about how, you know, I'd be crucified with Christ and how I'd resurrect, you know, with him. And I remember that that spoke to me. That was huge to me. And I'm like, so are you saying that I'm that I'm dead? And and I just like, oh, my God, and that I can once again be alive in him. And I just I remember that I broke down. I, I broke down and I just began to cry because mm -hmm here for so long i did not know how to say no i didn't know how to say no to anything and and i just slowly would continuously lose myself and finally i felt free i felt alive like i began to know who i was and that was something that i needed to to know like real i was it was religion that i was learning it was religion for so, so long because I did not know how to say no to people anymore. I was doing things out of obligation for so long that I was no longer doing things out of the love for Christ. And I was slowly slipping away. And because I didn't know how to say no, I would go into hiding and I was like, God, I don't even know how to say no to people anymore. So I would stay away from church. And I'm like, gosh, how do you, how do, you do this and not say no to people? And instead I stayed away. And you know, and I love to worship. Worship was my heart. And instead I'd slowly start going to karaoke bars because I just wanted to worship. And I began to worship in, at karaoke bars. And I found myself slowly slipping away just because I wanted to, karaoke, to, to worship and I would be karaoke instead. And I would do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And that was where the enemy began to literally take me away from the church, take me away from the things of God. And I started to slip away. But see, that's what the enemy wants to do. And he'll do that. He'll take you away from the things that, that God that God has you and, and, and loves from you. I began to do things out of obligation. It was no longer for the things, for, for my love for Christ anymore. But then here, I began to, to feel something when I found what, where my identity was. I began to feel something when I began to learn the scripture, when I began to learn who I was. And now I can say that everything that I do, I do it because I, I, I have a foundation now. I know who I am. I know that I have the authority. I know that I can do things because I love to do it with everything that I have within me. I am no longer obligated. I do it because I love to do it. I, because it's part of my life. I wake up, I'm worshiping. I go to sleep, I'm worshiping. It's just life. I don't question what I do. Everything that I do, I do it unto the Lord joyfully and willfully. So it's just, mm -hmm. that's what identity is to me. Yeah, you know, um, I, I often summarize it like this, guys, is that everybody's going to teach or preach from one mountain or the other mountain yeah. okay. one mountain is mount sinai that's where where uh, moses received the law and and mount sinai represents the law and there's a, another mountain called mount calvary and that's a mountain where we were set free where jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for us and what happens whether intentionally or unintentionally every single uh preacher or evangelist they're going to preach from one of these mountaintops and unfortunately, a lot of times you get people that are preaching out of Mount Sinai. And here's the thing is the law, the law was good and, and the law still applies. But thank God that Jesus fulfilled the law. Yes. But nevertheless, when we preach out of law, it, it tells people what they're doing wrong, but it doesn't tell them how to be set free. And the difference is I preach out of Mount Calvary because out of Mount Calvary is freedom. Out of Mount Calvary, Jesus fulfilled the law. Everything is fulfilled. And and usually a, um, a preacher will be one or the other or they bounce back and forth not realizing it and, and it confuses the listener yeah. because sometimes you think you're hearing law, sometimes you're hearing grace and sometimes it's getting mixed up 
you know, and, and, and it's not a good thing, guys. We need to learn to read the scriptures the way they are in context. I love the Old Testament. Yeah. It is powerful. It gives us the character of who God is. But nevertheless, we got to understand where we're at today because he has came to set us free. And many times it's like this, too, is that to learn identity is this, is the fact that a lot, every church, regardless of the denomination, guys, regardless of the denomina denomination, all of them exalt, exalt the Lord. I think from, from Catholic to Methodist to Pentecostal to Bat, all of them exalt the Lord. Here's the problem is that none of us teach us who we are in Christ mm. because the Bible says that we are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So what happens is that when somebody teaches Jesus as he should be exalted, he is exalted, but the higher we lift him up, we get left behind. And he, the, it's like a lot of times we, we fall in love with the Lord, but after a year, after two years, he feels so distant from us. Well, I sure felt distant, and I... Yeah. Yes. And it's like, because we're failing to teach who we are in Him, guys. We are His body. We are His body. It's like I loved Him. I was... I loved Him so much, but I, I was like, where are you? I felt like yeah. so far from Him, and and I was longing for so much more. Yeah. That's how I felt. And, yeah. And that's why a lot of things... I think a lot of people watching this, you might be in that where you're reading the Bible, but you're, you're reading rent from Mount Sinai. And, and all you see is a whole book of rules and regulations. And then you end up turning very militant. It becomes hard to, it becomes hard to serve. Yeah. And you become you know? overbearing and then you overbear non-believers guys. And here's the thing, right? We're supposed to tear walls down to let people get to Jesus, not build mountain ranges in the middle of that. You know, and, and unfortunately, when we don't know who we are in Christ and we don't teach it, it creates that. You know, so, so remember, <laughs> just a recap. Number one, we love Jesus with no agenda. Number two, we teach identity in Christ. Number three is we learn to hear the voice of God. We teach to hear the voice of God. God still speaks today. He still, and, and, and I know some people believe that he spoke um, and then he gave us the Bible and he stopped speaking. Follow the logic of that. Do you really believe that we serve a mute God? Mm. <laughs> Let me, let's put it this way, right? Because Jesus compares um, his relationship with us as a marriage. Okay? So let's imagine this. Yeah. Imagine if I with married you and um, the first month I talked and talked and talked and told you everything about me, everything I like, everything I don't like, my visions, my dreams, my goals and, and everything. You become you. And then after a month, I said, you know what? I just told you everything. And then I never speak to her again. I'd be so mad at you. What kind of relationship would that be? That'd be horrible. Well, why is it that sometimes we think God stopped talking? Matter of fact, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice yes doesn't that itself uh, follow the logic doesn't that mean he still speaks yes so he spoke from genesis to revelation he still speaks today he's a speaking god and if he can speak the world into existence in six days think about that mm. he literally formed the galaxy the universe everything in six days what do you think he'll do if he speaks into your life for six months six years 20 years Imagine what All can be done. Time. So we teach that God speaks today. And what's the fourth point? Fourth point. Oh, closed it up. <laughs> Sorry. Before we're a church, we are a family. That's huge. Yes. That extends to you. Yes. Before we're a church, we're a family. Uh, this is one thing that I have brought with me from prison. Um, when I got out, guys, this is, I'm telling you, right, this is going a different direction than we had some can notes I, can on. Can I add something really quick to yes. point to real fast, though? Because it goes back to, to when, when we teach identity, when all of that, when, when you learn all of that, you also have a reverence. Yes. You know? Because you, once, you, once you have Christ in you and you know who you are in Christ then you have reverence, mm -hmm. you know? Because it, it comes with responsibility. You know, you have accountability, responsibility, and you have, you know, you just have communication. You have all, all of that just comes naturally. You don't have to question any of that because you reverence, you reverence your, your heavenly father. And if he lives in you, then you look at yourself in the mirror, then 
you're going to speak to yourself Amen. as he would speak of you you're going to see yourself as you see him everything that you do you do it as if you're doing it unto him and yes. and that comes with reverence you know you speak of someone then you speak of that someone if he's speaking of them everything mm -hmm. that we do everything that we do what we do with reverence unto the lord well guys let me let me in excellence let me give you this because i'm not i don't want to go into a teaching seminar for identity but let me give you this this little little bit here do you realize that you are an ambassador of yes. jesus christ you are a representative you are literally representing the kingdom of God. Like United States has ambassadors, we have embassies all over the world. And that ambassador, um, whether it's a man or a woman, has a huge responsibility because they are in another country, they're in a foreign land, and they are literally speaking for the United States of America. Can you imagine? That's a huge responsibility. That's huge. That this whole nation, let's say you're, you're an ambassador in France, and you are there in their country and you are speaking for the United States. That's a huge, so because of that, there comes a responsibility. You, you, you aren't just some pew warmer. You're not a, a chair warmer. You're not, you are somebody in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that you are an ambassador to the kingdom of God, something bigger than the United States. Everybody has a purpose. I've yes. always said it, you know, um, like the story of Joseph, you know, I've always said the four Ps, you know, he was persecuted, he persevered. And even though, you know, he, he was persecuted, he was being positioned in the secular for mm -hmm. God's purpose. Yeah. And we all have a purpose and we're all being positioned for God's purpose. Yeah. Everybody, everybody. Remember those four P's guys. Amen. Remember those four P's. Amen guys. So, um, but yeah, before we're a church, we're a family. Um, this is something that I took with me from prison. Um, when, when I was, the places I was incarcerated at, um, we became a family. And you guys probably, if you have brothers or sisters, I'm not sure if you're on lockdown or solitary, but if you're somewhere and there's, uh, you know, open yard or, or GP, general population, whatever it is you're at, um, there's a brotherhood. Or if you're a woman, camaraderie. There's, a, there's a sisterhood. It's like a camaraderie, yeah. yeah. And you become family. And there was Christian brothers where I was with. We would get up and go to the chow hall together for breakfast. Some of us, I worked commissary in the commissary warehouse. And I, I had two brothers that were there with me. And then we go back for lunch and eat lunch together and go back to work, come back. And we would make a spread. We would drink our coffees. We'd work out together, exercise, whatever it was. It was a, it was a family. And when I got out, guys, that was lacking in my life because I would go to churches and, and I'm just like, man, I can't wait for the fellowship. And as soon as church would end, it was like, like, like turn a light on and roaches would just run. It was just like, <laughs> boom, everybody would leave. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 I, I want to know some people. Yeah. You know, and I felt, I felt very lonely, guys. Um, yeah, I felt very lonely and, and um, I missed my brothers, you know, I missed my brothers and, uh, but I'm just like, okay, I miss it, but I don't want to go back. <laughs> You know, but I said, you know what, then I'll do the next best thing is I'll I'll bring that culture into House of Rest before we're a church, we're a family and we have tried the, and 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 don't get me wrong, man. At first it was easy because we had 20 chairs in the basement and then we got a little bit bigger and, and it's a challenge each time. I mean, being moved into this facility, it's a challenge, but nevertheless, that's a culture we never want to leave behind. Yeah, I have always said that, um, that no matter, no matter how many chairs we have, I've always said it from, you know, the platform, I've always said what we don't ever want to lose is we never want to lose the culture of knowing your children's names. Yeah. We never want to lose the culture of being able to sit down with you and, and have a meal or just to be able to sit down and talk with everybody and um, go on bike rides together because, you know, that's something we're going to do in about a, a, you know, in about a month or so, mm -hmm. or just to be able to barbecue and to watch, you know, the fights on the big screen or to be able to, you know, do things together and go to your kids, you know, graduations or go to your kids' birthday parties or, or any of that. But this is what this is here is a big family. Yeah. Um, we never want to lose that culture. Family is really, really important to us because, you know, 
we are going to be in heaven together. We're a family. We're a yeah. kingdom family. And uh, we never want to lose our culture, no matter what. Exactly, guys. Exactly. You know, um, when we took on this endeavor, this ministry, um, I, we didn't take it lightly. Um, our, our, honestly, our, um, our responsibilities are, are a lot. You know, um, whether it's, it's Sunday service and then we have a Spanish service and, and we have prayer night on uh, Monday nights, we have evangelism. And on Tuesday, we have prayer, which is today. Wednesday, I have Bible study. Thursday, I, three, I teach three Bible college classes back to back to back. And on Friday, there's another study. On Friday, there's another study. Saturday, two Saturdays out of the month. Once is women get together. And, um, and the other one is a grocery giveaway. We give away groceries and end up feeding three to 400 people, you know? And so it's constantly ongoing. Um, and besides that, guys, I, I, I don't, I'm not on payroll here. <laughs> you know, there's, th- there's, there's odd jobs I got to do, things I got to do so we can sustain ourselves. And it's like, but when this opportunity came, How could I not? How can we not? You know, the opportunity to reach you. But I I will apologize right now that in in however way, because normally discipleship should happen like like this, me sitting together with you, you know. But there's a lot of you that we will never sit across from you. We can't. There's there's no way. So we want to use our time and opportunity like this to be able to disciple you. And even when we're sharing stories like this, I believe there's nuggets in there. I believe there's nuggets in leadership, in in character, in, in the way you carry yourself as a Christian, in the way you carry yourself as an ambassador, you know, and, and but there's like this it's a, it's impossible to be able to like answer letters and do all that stuff as much as unfortunately there's only 24 hours in a day yeah there is but guys i promise you i promise you that we are going to do everything we can to give you the tools because you are called to be leaders you're called to be leaders and we want to do our part in that and that's what that's our mission that's our goal that is what we're going for and that's why we're here we we're going to be intentional we're not going to waste your time you know, we are not. We want to pour into you and, uh, to the best ability that we can, whether it's our Sunday services or whether it's these podcasts. Yeah. And I know eventually, I know eventually that um, we're going to be able to give. I know that I know it's going to God's going to make it possible for you to be able to give the uh, seminar on here, the, identi- yeah. the identity seminar. And um, I know he's going to make a way for us to be able to do that with everybody, whether it be a uh, a thing where we have to break it down yeah. and and I know that um, I want to structure that so that we can be able to break it down and everybody can be involved in that yeah. um, because it is a long seminar but that's okay because we're going to do this together we're going to get through it and you guys are all going to be able to do the who are you identity um, seminar and we'll, even if we have to read the book that's okay we'll get it done yeah. but um, just get yourselves ready guys we're, we're all in this together we're on this journey together, um, but I know that we have a few. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted. I, I had two passages. I'm gonna save the second one for the next one, uh, but I want to show you guys that music video real quick. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let me show the video. Um, so just so you know, guys, um, the movie um, tomorrow. This is the cover you're gonna see right there on the screen. It's called Always With You, and just in case, just so you can recognize it, you're like, oh, what's this? You'll know it's the movie. Uh, but I do want to share the music video with you guys, and then we're going to get into Second Timothy. You guys ready? You ready? Yes, let's All do right. it. Check it out. Here it is.
right, there it is, guys. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, so guys, like I said, that image right there, that's gonna be the cover you'll be seeing. And, uh, but with that, we're gonna dive right into scripture. Um, we realize that we're already like 49 minutes in. <laughs> um, it goes by fast, guys. Yeah, it goes by fast. Uh, we're gonna go into 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. And uh, we're just, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. We're going to break this thing down. Um, it says this. It says, uh, I'm reading out of the ESV. It says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you... Always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Hmm. Fulfill your ministry. What is this? What's the context of this? Is this is that this is the last known letter we have from Paul that he gave to Timothy. The reason it's called Timothy is because it's a letter written to Timothy, and Timothy was his student. He was a young man that basically Paul brought in under under his wing like a son. Yeah. And. Matter of fact, Paul was beheaded not long after this letter, but he's pouring into Timothy and he's saying, listen, you got to be ready all, at all times because Paul is saying, I'm not always going to be there for you. You got to always be ready in season and out of season because the time is coming where false teachers are going to come. They're going to try to sway you. They're going to try to tell you something that is completely different, you know, from what the true gospel of Jesus Christ is, you know, and he says that that in the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, guys. This is why we want to be a biblical podcast, to teach you what the Bible is, to understand the context, the who, what, why, where, and how, you know, to build you to be strong. Because unfortunately, we're, we're, we're discipling and teaching through a screen and through a camera. So the best way we can do that is to be as biblically sound as we can to give you a strong foundation. Have discernment. Yeah, and give them a strong foundation, yeah. guys. Because, man, my gosh, you're in the belly of the beast. That's mm. what it is. Let's be real. You're in the belly of the beast. Some of you are in solitary confinement. You know, and, and I, you know, I don't, I don't have no words, but I know what it's like. I know what that's like. I've seen it break so many men. I've I, seen it break people. I remember you, too, you used to always tell me that there was always a lot of... Um, a lot of debating too. People are always constant, constant wanting to debate. As yeah, well, well, when I was, that was when I hit the yard. Um, there's, there's people <laughs> that just they, they want religion. They don't want a relationship. They want to be right. They just want to win. They don't want to win souls. They want to win arguments. Don't even get into that, guys. Yeah. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your breath. Don't argue with other Christians, and it, because that's what the enemy wants. He wants you arguing amongst yourselves and not reaching the lost. Yeah, that is the goal here. There's only one thing that makes all of heaven rejoice. And guess what? It's not winning a debate. It's not winning an argument. It is reaching a sinner for Jesus. So that is the goal. Keep your focus on that. Matter of fact, Jesus says he put, puts his hand to the plow and looks back. Is not fit for the kingdom of God. Mm, that's good. That's what scripture says, guys. So right here, listen, I love ultimately what it says at the very end. Be sober minded. Number one. Number two, endure suffering. And you guys, you know what suffering is. Yes. In the very place you're at, it is suffering. To be away from your family, to be away from your loved ones, to have the freedom, the very freedom that you have taken away from you. And, and I, I get it. It's decisions we made. But nevertheless, it still hurts. It's still suffering. It's yeah, still suffering. Absolutely. It still hurts. But look what he says. He says, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Yes. Find out, God, what do you want me to do now in this situation? Not when I get out or if I ever get out or anything like that. Right now, today, how can I fulfill my ministry right now, right here? Because the Bible says that tomorrow's not promised. Today is a day of salvation. Yeah. What if you're called to minister to that, to that one woman that you have been seeing that, you know, that has been on your heart? What if you're called to minister to that one woman? Go minister to her to that one gentleman that you have been, that has been on your heart and the Lord, it, it's been tugging at your heart and the Lord has been saying, go speak to that one person. Go speak to that person. Maybe that's your ministry to go speak to that one person and minister and disciple that person, edify that one person. Yeah. Remember your, your story, your testimony can be the one testimony that is going to touch and is going to reach that one person. Yeah. And that salvation, all of heaven is going to rejoice over that one salvation. 
Yeah. You know, another thing I want, I want you to remember this, guys, is like, for instance, it took me 32 years to give my life to the Lord. And I remember when I first got saved, I just wanted everybody to get saved. I wanted to just shove D Jesus down their throats. And the Lord's like, hold on, wait a second. Um, it took you 32 years. <laughs> so we got to be patient with those around us, guys. Absolutely. And here's, here's I, I'm gonna, you're going to hear me say this a lot. You're going to get sick and tired of hearing me say this, but I'm going to start now is your walk better be louder than your talk. Mm, yes. It doesn't he matter. says that to yeah. all the time, guys. I say it all the time. I all say it time. to the men. I say it to the congregation. Your walk better be way louder than your talk because nobody cares what you're saying if you ain't living it. That's right. You know, ultimate, and especially in a place like where you're at. I know. You know, I know. You know, but like it says here, um, it says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, Right. So some people stop there. Like, see, I'm just exhorting everybody. I got to exhort because it says, well, look what it says next. Exhort with complete patience and teaching. Paciencia. With patience and teaching, guys. Para los que saben en español, paciencia, andale. You are not trying to win a debate. You're trying to win a soul. Mm -hmm. And and it's some people, it's going to take a miracle from God. You can't force anyone. Have a uh, little bit of grace. Have some grace. Don't forget where you came from. Mm -hmm. And don't forget how stubborn you were. Yikes. How do I know that? Because I was a stubborn one. <laughs> you know, that's why I, I really related to Peter because Peter was a stubborn man. And I'm just like, man, I would have been the Peter of that time. And but you know what? It's OK, because God loves stubborn people. Because and women, once, we can be stubborn too. Once the Lord gets a hold of a stubborn person, man, that that person will not budge a, a, away from the Lord. So, so turn that stubbornness into a positive. Because what what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn it for good. Yeah, you know? and we can be the same way, women. Sometimes, women, we we want to think that we want to put on the pants and we want to. You know, we want to run everything, and sometimes we don't want to let the man be a man sometimes, you know, but, you know, come on. You know, sometimes sometimes we got to humble ourselves, and we got to uh, say, Lord, I'm ready to, to let go of some things and, and let my husband be the man of the house and let him be who he needs to be, you know, and, and you may be a, a woman who who is who is watching this and maybe your husband is the one that's incarcerated and he's ready to come home and you're not giving him or you're not wanting to give him the place that he needs to take when he comes home but you know you know what that's gonna do that's that's gonna hurt him you need to allow you need to move aside and allow him to become the man that he needs to become in Christ you need to allow him to become the man that God is calling him to be so that he can rise up, edify him, help him through, become a helpmate to him so that he can become that man and watch, watch what God will do. You know, serving God is not a sprint, it's a marathon, you know, and, and you got to remember, guys, I, I know you're in a place where there's a lot of non-believers. Yes, that's frustrating. Yes, that's hard. Um, you know, but you got to be patient. Don't forget that Jesus says that they're the blind leading the blind mm. and you can't get angry. Imagine a blind person and, and you have a, a, a bouquet of red roses right there and you're telling them, look at those red roses. Look how beautiful they are. And they're just like, I'm blind. I can't see. And you're just like, you can't see. Come on. Are you serious? Open your eyes. And you get angry at them because they can't see the red roses. How unfair would that be to the blind person? Yeah. Well, guess what? When you try to pour truth and, and share truth with somebody that's blind in the spirit, are you going to get equally as angry? That's why Jesus says he came to give sight to the blind. He wasn't only talking about the physical eyes. He was talking about the eyes of the heart. Yeah. So you got to allow that healing to happen because every single person, not in the Lord, they have, there's, there's more senses than the five senses that we have, the physical senses. You know, our eyes, our ears, our touch and taste and taste all that. Yeah. No, there are spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. How do I know that? How can I tie that to scripture? Because the Bible says, Jesus says, he who has an ear to hear, hear what the spirit is saying to the church. He's not talking about these ears. Yeah. He's talking about the ears of your heart, guys. The ears of your heart, yeah. So, um, but with that, guys, I pray that you receive something from this. Um, uh, 
I do want to end in prayer for you, though. Yes. And we want to always end in prayer. That's something I want to apologize right now that we haven't ended the first two. Um, like I said, we're just getting into this thing, but we realize that it's very important because we don't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. I, I, and even though your letters are going to be, a whole team is going to be interceding, but I think it's important right now because I don't know what you're going through in your life right now. We don't know what you're going through. Uh, so we're just going to pray every single time, and I pray that the Holy Spirit is going to lead every single time. Amen. So, Lord God, I thank you for each and every person yes, that is thank watching this, Lord. Well. I pray in the name of Jesus because there is no walls that can keep you out. Yes. But I pray, Lord God, that you lift them up that you open the hearts of those, even the heart in Lord God, because you say that you will take out the heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh and they will, and you will put your spirit in them, Lord. That if anybody is watching this, Lord God, and they wanna just completely surrender because they realize that the time is coming and tomorrow's not promised and today's a day of salvation, yes. Lord. Let them in their own words pray, Lord God, and, and maybe I can guide them and say, Lord, if this is you and you wanna surrender your life to the Lord, repeat after me. But it doesn't mean nothing unless you believe with all your heart and say Lord God I repent of my sins I turn away from my old life I do a 180 and I face you Lord take out my heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh I believe you died on the cross and after three days you rose in power live in me let me love what you love and let me hate what you hate change me in jesus name amen i pray for all those that are serving you but hurting i pray for those and their their not only for them i pray for their families yes, for those that yes, they're getting yes. calls or messages home that somebody is sick i pray yes, in the name of jesus against that sickness i cancel that sickness and pain right now in the name of jesus for those that are being oppressed and they're hearing voices or they're hearing things happening in their cells I command that yes, spirit to shut God, up in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I rebuke it. Yes, you got to leave. That place is holy yes, ground, Lord, and there is no way Thank we're going to allow the enemy God. to trespass against that which God, God yes, declares Lord. holy. In the name of Jesus, Jesus I thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. All right, guys. God bless you, and uh, see you. Oh, actually, the, enjoy the movie that we're going to be releasing tomorrow, Always With You. And then we'll see you for a Sunday service. Amen. Part three of the parables of Jesus. Yes. Bye, guys. All right, guys. Bye.